now we are going to read about the Epstein Barr viruses these are very important viruses from um, in microbiology as well as in pathology also because they are associated with many of the carcinomas many of the neoplasm or malignancies uh, so that's why they become very important virus for us to know so the Epstein Barr virus the important point is that they infect the B cells like we have seen the parvo viruses uh, which were infecting the which cells they were infecting the RBCs precursors of the RBCs but this Epstein Barr viruses are infecting the B cells B uh, B cells are a type of lymphocytes which are called as B lymphocytes so they are infecting the B lymphocytes thereby some of the malignancies associated with the B lymphocytes are caused by this virus as well now how does they infect the B cells that's the question arises here so they infect the B cells by binding to the CD21 receptor of the B cells please remember this name it is CD21 receptor of B cells uh, which is caused I mean by virtue of which this Epstein-Barr virus is affecting the B cells that becomes a very important MCQ question now comes the pathogenesis of the Epstein-Barr virus so as we have talked that the EBB binds to the CD21 receptor of the B cells that causes the polyclonal activation of the B cells and when the B cells are activated polyclonally then there is immortalization okay there is immortalization of the B cells and the B cells undergo for latency either they go for the latency or they go they lead to the infinite proliferation of the B cells and we know that anywhere if there is unregulated or uh, infinite proliferation of any cell that will lead to to or land up to the malignancy so here also when there is infant uh, infinite proliferation of the b cells that lands up into the malignancy of the b cells okay so talking about the clinical features of the epstein bar virus infection so the first of all it causes the infectious mononucleosis we have talked about the cytomegalovirus which causes infectious mononucleosis like syndrome but not exactly the infectious mononucleosis now we come to know that this infectious mononucleosis is exactly caused by this Epstein-Barr virus so what is the clinical features of this Epstein-Barr virus I mean uh, of this if, uh, infectious mononucleosis the clinical features are there will be fever there will be myalgia there will be pharyngitis hepatosplenomegaly cervical lymphadenopathy will be there so these are some of the features of the infectious mononucleosis now since it is causing immortalization of the b cells so and also infinite proliferation of the b cells that's why it may also cause certain malignancies so uh, some of which are the Burkitt's lymphoma which is uh, which you will read in pathology and then you will also read in the ENT that uh, these Epstein Barr virus are also associated with nasopharyngeal carcinomas they are associated or they are I um, mean uh, risk factor for development of the nasopharyngeal carcinoma they causes rather they causes this they cause this nasopharyngeal carcinoma then also they are associated with the Hodgkin lymphoma and the non Hodgkin lymphoma which you will read in the pathology now coming to the lab diagnosis of this uh, Epstein-Barr virus infection so the lab diagnosis is that we can do it by the antibody detection okay so there is a test called as the Paul Bunnell test it is a heterophile agglutination test just remember this that the Paul Bunnell test is a heterophile agglutination test you will uh, see in detail what is this heterophile agglutination test in the immunology section so we will talk about this later on but for the time being you should remember that this Paul Bunnell test is a example of the heterophile agglutination test and by this Paul Bunnell test you can detect the antibody and by a virtue of which you can detect the Epstein-Barr virus infection as well so that is a way in which we can detect the infection other than that we have the Epstein-Barr virus specific antibody detection so antibodies are detected against the viral capsid antigen and the Epstein-Barr nuclear antigen so these are the two antigen against which the antibodies are detected these are called as the Epstein-Barr virus specific antibodies 
and uh, detection of those antibody leads uh, leads to the detection of the or diagnosis of the Epstein Barr virus infection. Then we have molecular methods like PCR as well for the detection of or for the diagnosis of the infection caused by the Epstein Barr virus. So this is all about the Epstein Barr virus. If you ask me, like uh, what is most important point in this uh, infection? I mean, in in the in the topic of the Epstein Barr virus, the most important point in this topic is this receptor. Okay, this CD21 receptor of the B cell is uh, being involved in this in the infection caused by the Epstein Barr virus plus uh, the malignancies which are associated with the Epstein Barr virus. These are also very important to remember. Okay, these malignancies are being associated in the uh, Epstein Barr virus infection plus it also causes the infectious mononucleosis that should also not be forgotten. So this is all the important features about the all the important points about the Epstein-Barr virus.